Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. Today we are going to guide you through a process of creating a replication of a bucket from one InfluxDB server to another one. You know, sometimes you need to replicate some buckets between Influx instances for whatever reason. Maybe as a backup, or a disaster recovery solution, or maybe to save performance on a master server and make some reads and calculations in the For our replication example, we will need two Influx instances. In my case, I will use two Influx instances installed in the same way as we did in previous video, named Installing Influx 2 on Ubuntu, so you can find it on this link. If you're ready, let's start. On a target Influx, in my case Influx 1, we will create new bucket. So I have logged into my Influx 1 server, I'm going to the buckets, do create bucket, use the name like REPL, I will keep attention time for today's. So I create it, I also need token, so I put description REPL and we'll take bucket REPL and generate it. Let's copy this token and keep it safe as we will need this for our next steps. So as we have created this bucket, we have token when we need to switch to a second server and we go directly to CLI. Then on source influx, in my case influx2, we create remote connection and we do that with influx remote command. You can type to see more options. It's remote create and if you do help it will give more options. So what we'll do now, influx remote create we put org, in my case it's my org. We put name, which makes sense. So usually I use something which could indicate for what reason it is. So I will put two, influx one. It's giving direction that this remote connection is made to influx one server. We also add remote URL. In my case it's HTTPS influx minus one dot mylab dot local and port 8087 we also need to give remote api token and that's the token which we have been copied before so let's copy that from a safe place and paste it here what we also need is say remote org ID. The remote org ID we can find if we back to the source server. And if you click here, we see this org ID here. So let's back to the source server and paste it here. As I'm using self site certificate, I need to add this allow insecure. TLS as for connection and for our CLI skip verify. I hope you're already using TA certificate, then in such case you don't need these two flags. Okay. Good. We see this connection great. The hint for future we also could check this later if you need, so we will do influx remote. LS, I will add skip verify as I'm on self sign certificate. So you see, if you got this here, so showing it is. So we have remote connection, and this remote connection could be used for multiple replications. Let's create at least the first one, and we'll create now a replication. And we do with this influx replication create. Also, if I add minus minus help, you could get some hints what to use. We need name. For name, I will use something system to REPL and just what I'm doing from system bucket to the REPL bucket. We need remote ID and that's the ID for where we created connection. So this one. What you need also it's local 
bucket ID. And let's check that ID from a GUI. So if I go to my second server, connect it. And go to my buckets and my system and let's ID copy. And let's go to our source server again and paste it. So we have local bucket ID. We need also a remote bucket ID that will take from a target system. So we go to influx one, go to the buckets and we use REPL. So we take that one and back to the sourcer and paste it. Small hint, you also could use remote bucket and name but what I found is issue in case you need to change later for some reason it does not allow you. If you use ID you can change ID but the name of remote bucket you can't. And again I'll add skip verify because of my self sign certificate. If you are already using TA or using HTTP but no TLS then also you don't need that. Good. We see it got created. We also could check again with influx replication ls. What sometimes it looks a bit messy where you could do minus minus json that giving you a json format. So what we see here we see a local bucket id we see organization, we see remaining sync, which is saying zero. That sounds quite good. We see latest response code, which is 204, that's also good. And we see currently core size 4988. That means that going on. Let's try again. You see this growing and the remaining sync is zero. So let's go to the target to verify it. So if I go now to browse, we see REPL, it's already have this data. So replication data start to arrive. Be aware that the data starting to be written here from the time when you create replication. So the data what it was in, in the bucket before, it's not replicated. So if you have old bucket which you need to have replicated, so first you need to make some backup, move here, import, and then start replication on top, which would follow the next replication steps. Just to show you what happens when you when a target system dies, that the replication actually is still buffering that. What I'll do, I will go on the target system and on target system I will do sudo system ctl stop influx tv. Okay, let's check status. This is st it stopped. Let's switch to the source system. And if you check this one again, so first we see latest message, it's saying connection refused. Also if we check remaining bytes to be synced, you see this number not the zero anymore. And if you continue checking, you see it's growing. One thing also makes sense to, to tell you, we use default setting, but you was able to set for example max age set if you don't want to keep seven days. It, it depends for how long you need to keep or how long you expect that the target system will be down because that's the query how long it will keep the data in case your, your target is dead and when you bring target back it will sync but if that will be out of this period then you get lost of the data. So seven days for me is fine but it depends on your requirements also. Let's check one more time. 
you see already almost 15,000 bytes it's to be synced so let's start the target system if I do start and check status service up and running let's check the source system and here you go you see remaining zero the message or error disappeared also the latest response code is 204 and if you go to a target system GUI you see it's looping so let's refresh and login again and we see in REPL the data is coming we can check anything like mem free let's check last five minutes and you see there is no any gap all the data came the same frequency today we created replication and replicated one bucket from the server system to the target thank you for watching and if you found this tutorial helpful don't forget to like share and subscribe for more tutorials like this see you in the next video Thank you.